Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. As you can see from the window behind me. Oh my gosh, I can't. There. <laughs> it's still early. It's a little after five. This is my Sunday. So again, Tuesday for you guys um, that I'm filming this, but my Sunday. So obviously I'm not at work. I'm sitting home eating my breakfast, which is this is not going to look appetizing. Don't judge the looks. Doesn't look good, does it? But this is oatmeal this morning. So old fashioned rolled oats that I cooked with unsweetened vanilla almond milk, two parts milk to one part oats. So I used for my serving that I like, one third cup of oats and then two thirds cup of the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. And then when it's all done cooking, I've added some ancient grain granola, um, organic ancient grain granola. So um, it has a lot of like spelt and amaranth and quinoa, it does have some almonds in it. So all good ancient grains. I added some walnuts. And then to give it the color, I added it, I added it. I added some semi-sweet chocolate chips and a giant heaping tablespoon of all natural organic peanut butter. And then I also added my vanilla protein powder that I put in my shakes every day. So with all those goodies in there, I didn't need to add any sweetener. I know a lot of people when they make oatmeal, they're adding things like brown sugar in there and hmm. And that's what today's topic is about. As you could probably tell from the title, it's on the hazards of all the sugar that we consume. Now, when I don't put like um, the little bit of semi-sweet chocolate chips or the vanilla protein powder in my oatmeal, if I make it like with a different theme, flavor, whatever, I will sometimes drizzle just a touch of agave nectar because I don't know about you, but I've given up a lot of added sugars, but there are just some things that I can't get it down without a touch of sweetness. So that's where I've switched to the agave. So excuse me while I eat, because of course you know me, I'm on a schedule and I got stuff to do. So today is grocery day for me. So I will be doing a grocery haul after I talk to you about sugar. And um, then I'll wrap up the video after that. I guess I'll include dinner in here too. Might as well. So, again, today's topic, sugar. You don't need me to tell you that sugar is bad for you. You know it's bad for you. Everybody knows sugar is bad for you. Um, but, you know, I think we have this mentality of, oh, a little bit here and there isn't going to hurt me. Um but those little bits here and there add up. Or, um, oh my gosh, I completely lost my train of thought where I was going right after that. Oh my gosh, can you tell I have not had any protein and breakfast yet this morning? Oh, and most people don't realize where sugar is hidden and everything you buy in the store. Like, if you're buying anything in the grocery store that is processed and packaged for you, that's meaning that, that it's not fresh, there is a huge chance that that product is going to have sugar. Most people think spaghetti sauce. Well, it's not a sweet food. That's not a dessert. That's not a treat. It shouldn't need sugar. It shouldn't have sugar in it. Go to the grocery store and just start picking up random jars of spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, pasta sauce, whatever you want to call it. You're going to find added sugar in there. Why? Look at your peanut butters. Like I'm eating peanut butter. My peanut butter is organic and just has peanuts and salt. That's it. But go pick up a jar of Jif or some other peanut butter off the shelf. You're going to see added sugar and you're going to see added oil. 
Now, peanuts themselves have enough fat and oil in them. Why do they need to add oil to it? And that's a whole nother topic is all the bad oils. But you're gonna find added sugar in most of your big name peanut butters. I have some really funky hairs happening here, don't I? Oh, and look at my gray. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's good this Saturday is hair day. So anyway, I have my notes and stuff here in front of me. So if I look down on occasion, I'm looking at my notes because I wanted statistics for you. So in the U.S. alone, added sugars, we're talking added sugars. We're not talking about naturally occurring sugars in food like fruits and some vegetables are going to have natural sugars in them. We're not discussing that. We're discussing added. So added sugars account for 17% of a total calorie intake per day in adults and up to 14% for children. That's a lot. That's pushing 20% of your daily calories people are consuming in added sugar. From a government standpoint, and y'all know how I feel about that. The government, the government is suggesting added sugar should be less than 10% of your daily calorie intake. Now, again, I'm not a calorie counter. Um, I don't have time for that shit, counting all calories and weighing all my food. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. If you have time to do that, and you want to go buy a scale and invest in that, and you want to start doing that, kudos to you. Go for it. I'm not doing that at this point. Um... I know that I've pretty much cut out 99% of the added sugars in my diet. So anyway, keeping it to less than 10% of the calories per day, if you want to actually judge what that is, if you're basing it on the average 2,000 calorie a day diet, you can sit and start weighing your food and figuring it out from there. But that's what the government recommends, less than 10%. I'm pretty damn sure that at this point with what the stuff that I'm eating, I'm well under 10, um, if not in this, you know, I'm, I'm like well under 10, like seriously. So, what is sugar doing to your body? Well, y'all know one of the biggest things is it's going to make you gain weight. Bottom line, it's going to put weight on your body. In doing the research that I did, one of the biggest culprits they've come up with, all these scientific research research things that are out there, one of the biggest culprits is sugar-sweetened beverages. So obviously that is soda, but that also includes juices or stuff that's disguised to be juice in the store. And sweet tea, which was always my weakness. I loved I loved my sweet tea. And then when I lived in Florida, oh, holy Hannah, the restaurants down there, believe it or not, even that sweet tea was too sweet for me. Like sugar is, it's a true addiction. And like I said, it's in so many things. So um, the reason that it makes you gain weight, and again, I gotta read my notes for some of these words. You have a hormone in your body that regulates hunger, and tells you when it's time to stop eating. The name of that hormone is leptin. So what the sugar and the fructose does is it blocks that. It blocks, it causes your body to not respond to that hormone. So you're like never feeling full and your hunger is not regulated. So then you're eating more and more and more which is subsequent, subsequently going to make you gain weight. And that's not just in the food. Again, it's in the stuff you drink. Trying to cut back on the sugary beverages is hard. I know that. You've heard me say before, I was never a water drinker. I would drink hot tea in the morning, sweetened with turbinado sugar. And then the rest of the day, was my own homemade iced tea sweetened with white refined sugar. 
and I'm going to assume that up until the time I would go to bed. It's funny when I look back on some of my old YouTube videos. I've been doing YouTube since the end of 2015. And if you look back at some of my original grocery hauls, in fact, like one of the very first videos I did was a grocery haul from a grocery store that's local to this area named Carnes. Holy shit. The soda, like vanilla Coke was always my thing. Once Coke started making a vanilla Coke, oh, truly addicted. That was the only beverage that would be more important to me than soda. I mean, than iced tea at the time. And I know for some of you, quitting sugar cold turkey is going to be very tough just because of the addiction that we all have. But maybe just try cutting out the beverages, getting rid of the beverages with the sugar. Start there, replacing them with water. So anyway, too much sugar, especially from these sugary beverages, going to cause you to gain weight. Second thing sugar is doing to your body. It's increasing your risk of heart disease. Heart disease is still the number one cause of death worldwide. So high sugar diet, it's going to lead to obesity, which we just discussed, inflammation in your body. It's going to up your triglycerides. It's going to up your blood sugar and it's going to up your blood pressure. All of these are risk factors for heart disease. There's just like, there's no explanation needed. Sugar is going to kill us. Sugar will kill you. One 16 ounce can of soda. One, just one soda a day contains 52 grams of sugar, whether that's in the form of real sugar, high fructose corn syrup, it's just sugar. I'm just going to use the term sugar. 52 grams of sugar just in one can. Based on that 2000 calorie diet, that one can of soda is 10% of your calories. Of your daily calorie intake. One can of soda can already put you over your daily limit for sugar. So, too much sugar increases your heart disease risk. Believe it or not, sugar has been linked to acne. I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 1969. I'm 51 years old. So I grew up in the 70s and 80s. Back then, research was saying that you wanted to avoid... Chocolate was a big thing. But they were also saying you needed to, you needed to avoid oil-based products to cut down on that oil production. So like French fries, potato chips, things like that, they're fried in, deep fried in oil to lower your acne risk. Well, research now, again, I'm sorry, science is always changing, research is always changing. I can just give you what I'm reading, that's it. But again, I'm going to read this. So sugary foods quickly spike your blood sugar and your insulin levels. Again, we already know that, but how that affects the ac any acne is it causes an increased androgen secretion oil, which plays a role in acne development. So they studied, one study studied 2,300 teenagers. <coughs> those who had, those who consumed large amounts of sugar, it increased their chances of a real problem with acne. We're not talking the occasional pimple, especially around the time of the month, ladies. But um, your your problem acne, it increased it over 30%. And they have non-sugar diet. So the increase of androgen secretion oil is what you want to remember, which increases your risk of developing acne. Another problem with the sugar, obvious, type 2 diabetes. Again, you already know this stuff. In the past 30 years, so we're in two top, say the 20s, so back in the 90s, 
the worldwide prevalence of diabetes has more than doubled. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Obviously, it's our increase in junk that we're eating, especially sugar, and it's our lack of activity because that was when everybody started getting computers in their homes, which then tied people to the screens. So right there, huge link. The foods have gotten worse over the years as far as the processing and the preservatives and all the junk that's in them. And we've been sitting on our behinds or on your ass, if I have to get blunt, get off your ass. Start moving your body a little more. There are studies that suggest that sugar increases your risk of certain types of cancers. So, another study. 430,000 people in this study. That's a lot. It's not like they studied 100 people. 430,000 people. Added sugar consumption was positively associated with an increased risk of cancer of the esophagus, and cancer of the small intestine. I honestly don't know how quickly the esophageal cancer can be discovered. I don't know what the symptoms are. Um, I don't know if it's something they test for. Like, can you do um, like screenings for that kind of stuff? I don't know. Obviously, anything in the intestinal tract, most of the time, there's no symptoms and it's not found until you're like stage three or four. So I don't know about you, but um, y'all know my history of the colon. If you've been watching me for a while, if you haven't, just go back and look. <laughs> um, I'm very cautious of my intake of anything that's gonna screw up my intestinal tract at this point in my life. I'm already to the point where my colonoscopies are every five years instead of 10. So knowing that increased sugar intake can up my risk of cancer, the small intestine, I'm not taking the chance. I'm not taking the chance. I'm keeping added sugars out of my diet. I also researched where added sugar can be a risk for depression. 2020 has already seen a huge increase in mental disorders because of that C word, that, that COVID. I don't even like saying the word anymore, which, oh, by the way, off on a tangent, my oldest daughter now has COVID. And this is a child who wears her mask everywhere. So don't even come at me with the mask stuff. We're not discussing that. But anyway, she now has COVID, but she's fine. She thought she only had a sinus infection, but after about two weeks and it didn't go away, she finally went and got a test. So anyway, where was I going? Oh, COVID. When they started locking everybody down all over the world, can't leave your house, can't go anywhere, stay inside, it increased depression and a lot of other mental disorders. But then knowing that on top of it, increased sugar can also increase depression. People were stuck at home and I started seeing like, um, videos of, oh, what are you doing to entertain yourself while you're on lockdown? People were baking cookies and cakes and it's become a, oh, let's get in the kitchen. Let's experiment more. Let's get the kids in the kitchen. Let's teach them how to cook. Well, instead of teaching them how to cook good stuff, they're teaching them how to bake cake and shit. Okay. Now you're just adding to the problem. Find something else to cook. Get rid of the sugar. Don't take that chance of increasing your risk of depression. And so you know I'm not talking about my heim. You know I'm not talking out of my heim. This is the research. Researchers believe that blood sugar swings, neurotransmitter dysregulation, and inflammation may all be reasons for sugar's detrimental impact on mental health. A study of 8,000 people, again, significant amount of people and they studied these 8,000 people over 22 years so long research showed that men who consume 67 grams or more of sugar per day 
were 23% more likely to develop depression than men who ate less than 40 grams per day. Now I know that's not huge, huge difference between, um, a huge, like 23% you don't think is a, a huge number for an increase of a risk, but do you wanna gamble with that? And that was men. Another study in over 69,000 women, that's a lot of women, that's a lot of women out there, ladies. This study demonstrated that those with the highest intakes of added sugars had a significantly greater risk of depression compared to people, women who consumed less. Didn't give me the percentage, just said an increased, a significant, significantly greater risk. So again, something I don't want to, I don't want to mess around with. Um, I've had enough issues in my life that have caused me to be sad on occasion. But it's stuff that everybody gets sad over. Like, if y'all have been with me for a while, you know, 2017 was a bad year. In the course of 14 months, I had nine deaths between my dog, a friend, and family members. That's a bad year. That's a bad year for me. Um, my numerous health issues that I've had over the years. Uh, mo <sighs> my health issues um, really weren't diet related, but nor could they have been prevented by diet, except possibly the diverticulitis, even though mine isn't food related, mine is stress related. Um, had my colon been a bit healthier, maybe I could have avoided this colostomy bag procedure that I had done, which thank God is now reversed if you're new here. But I've had enough health scares over my life and accidents and, you know, huge, huge ass surgeries that have put me in a mental funk afterwards. When you have to put your life on hold for medical reasons, it does make you sad. And then to add to it by eating junk, which increases that risk even more, Again, something I'm no longer willing to put up with. So, a couple more things, and I'm going to shorten these because there's really not a whole lot of explanation needed. Research has shown that increased sugar intake accelerates. Oh my God, accelerates the skin aging process. Y'all know I've already done enough damage to my skin with my years and years and years of tanning bed use. <laughs> Haven't we all? Plus laying in the sun, again, product of the 70s and 80s, we sprayed sun in in our hair and slathered our bodies up with baby oil and fried like bacon outside. It's just what we did back then. So I have enough um, premature aging of my skin, knowing that sugar is going to make that even worse. Again, another reason to get rid of sugar. Sugar increases cellular aging. Again, basic, your whole body's made up of cells. Increased sugar intake has been proven to age your cells even quicker. Draining of your energy. So we've all heard the story before. You get your slump around two or three in the afternoon. You go to the vending machine, you get a candy bar, you get a soda. It gives you a little bit of energy, but then you have the crash afterwards. Again, you all have heard all this before. It's legit. It's true. You haven't been lied to. So increasing all that added simple refined sugar actually drains your energy. It may give you that short little spike, but then when you plummet, you plummet to worse than what you were before you started adding or eating that candy bar or drinking that soda. Another big one that I was diagnosed with is fatty liver disease. And there's two types, there's alcohol related and then there's non-alcohol fatty liver disease. I had been diagnosed with the non-alcohol fatty liver disease, even though I've always been a drinker. At that time when I got the diagnosis, I hadn't, I wasn't drinking hardly anything. So all the increased sugar, your liver's trying to process it. They can only process so much. It turns all the added sugar into fat and then that's stored on your liver so you don't want liver issues stop eating sugar 
and then four other quick ones that I researched. It increases your risk of kidney disease. I've already had an operation on one of my kidneys. Let's keep the kidneys as healthy as possible. Get rid of the sugar, add the water. Y'all know sugar negatively impacts your dental health. So you wanna risk more cavities, more dental bills, more pain at the dentist, keep eating the sugar. It increases your risk of developing gout. I've never suffered from gout. My stepfather did when he was alive. From what I hear, it's very painful. Stop eating the sugar, get rid of the inflammation, get rid of the pain. And then this research has, it's still ongoing, but something that they're now seeing, again, new research, is high sugar diets lead to impaired memory and have been linked to an increased risk of dementia. None of us wanna suffer from Alzheimer's when we get older. So they are just some of the many hazards of sugar. So I'm gonna stop yapping from now, for now. Um, and we'll go over, um, I'll go over my grocery haul with you when I get it, what I'm eating this week and um, what I'm making for dinner. And then um, maybe some of the healthier swaps we can make to get rid of the added sugars and what can we replace those with. All right, so it's still early, still dark outside, but I'm actually starting dinner. So right now it's about 5.40 in the morning. My dinner tonight's going to be chicken fried rice. And fried rice recipes always work better with leftover rice, cold rice from the refrigerator. They just seem to turn out better, at least for me. Um, so today is Tuesday. I need rice for tonight. My dinner for Saturday, I also need rice for. So I'm going to cook a very large portion of rice, rice this morning. Then I have it for both meals. Um, and especially Saturday being a work day for me and I get my hair done as much as I can have prepped ahead of time for Saturday's meal, the better I'm going to be. So I'm going to spin you around and show you how I make my rice in a larger portion. So I am using an 11 by 7 Pyrex baking dish, glass dish. In here I have two cups of organic brown rice. There's one of those swaps you can make. You still want to eat some, if you still want to eat some complex carbs and you want to keep it lower on the glycemic index, swap that white rice with some for some good brown rice. Much better for you. This is a good healthy dollop. I'm gonna guess, I didn't measure, I'm gonna guess about a tablespoon and a half of the better than bouillon chicken base that you buy in the jar. And to this, I'm going to add about four and a half cups of hot water. I'm not gonna add any other seasoning to this. I'm gonna let that chicken base be enough at this point because I am using this in other recipes and not eating it just as a side dish, I will be adding seasonings to those recipes. So I don't wanna take the chance of having, um, having it be too salty. So just gonna mix this up to get that base melted a little bit. That's why I used the hot water um, to get that chicken base melted. And then I'm gonna cover this with foil and I'm gonna bake this in the oven for about an hour at 350 degrees. And doing it like this, instead of on the stove, the stove top, I've just found that it's easier to kind of control. Um, that slow roasting just puffs my rice up more. And I don't have to worry about it scorching and sticking to the bottom of the saucepan that I'm cooking in on the stove top if I'm not paying attention or if I'm busy doing something else. Seems like I have more control over how it turns out doing it like this. So again, I'm gonna cover it. And that's how it in the oven. 
And here's that rice. Perfect every time doing it this way. Hi, back from grocery shopping. So I thought I'd go over my meal plan with you and let you know what we're eating this week. One of my meals from last week, if you watched last week's video, was chicken fried rice that got bumped to this week because of the amount of leftovers that I had to use up. So tonight, again, it's chicken fried rice and I will um, show me making that on camera. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we're gonna have some fish and some fresh broccoli that I'll steam. Thursday, we are having jerk chicken thighs and some black bean Caribbean soup and salads. Friday will be spaghetti and salad. And for the spaghetti, I do use a gluten-free spaghetti. It is made with brown rice and quinoa. Saturday will be some smoked turkey sausage fried with peppers and onions with rice and red beans. That's what the second half of the rice is for that I've made this morning. Sunday, we will be having some kind of steak. That's the only thing I could not buy today at the store was steak. The butcher shop that I need to go to to buy them is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, so I can swing by there on my way home from work tomorrow. So Sunday will be some kind of steak, whatever cut I decide to get. I'm making a baked sweet potato for Mike. He never had the sweet potato fries last week, so we're gonna make a baked sweet potato this week. I'm gonna make him some lima beans and I'll have a salad. And then of course, Monday is always our leftover day. So I will spin you around. You can see part of my groceries there, but there's more on the counter. So I will spin you around and show you what I picked up today. This will be a combination of Whole Foods, Target, Wegmans, and Aldi. This is the protein powder that Mike uses to make a shake every day for his lunch. It is the Organic Protein and Greens by Garden of Life in the vanilla flavor, and he just mixes that with the vanilla almond milk. I needed more bathroom cleaner, some organic baby spinach, a box of sandwich bags, Two bottles of kefir. This is what I use for my protein shakes. Um, the five days that I go to work, I use these to make my shake for my lunch. I got the blood orange flavor and the wild berries flavor. Three half gallons of the unsweet vanilla almond milk. Some organic romaine hearts. A loaf of Ezekiel bread. Five yogurts for Mike, one mixed berry, two peach, two strawberry, a cantaloupe, some coffee creamer for Mike. He uses the Nut Paws brand, which is made of almond and coconut milk. Two dozen of the cage-free jumbo brown eggs. These are organic eggs, which means the chickens are fed organic diet. Two big bags of cherries and two containers of blueberries. Everything's red over here. So I got six big, wonderful Lancaster County tomatoes. Um, I think it's like a total of eight nectarines and five of the Honeycrisp apples. There's a one pound bag of frozen sliced peaches. My tea bags, the Awake English Breakfast Feet. English breakfast tea by Tezo, and then Mike wanted, we were out of this and he likes this, the organic nighty night tea. Four bottles of the pineapple coconut body armor. A three pound bag of the frozen mixed berries, which are strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. Again, the frozen fruit is what I also use in my shakes. Two blocks of Colby Jack cheese. This is the one little sweet treat that I keep in the house that does have sugar, added sugar in it, but it is 70% cocoa. So of all the chocolates you can eat from what I've researched, as long as your chocolate is 70% cocoa, there actually is health benefits to this and it will not you know, spike those blood sugar levels. So I buy the Lindt Lindor truffles um, that is again, 70% cocoa. 
And then I went stopped at Dick's as well and picked up two 20 pound dumbbells. These little suckers are heavy, especially when you're carrying them both at one time. Um, but Mike wanted these, so I picked those up for him. So overall, very healthy grocery haul. Everything I need for my meal plan, plus some other stuff that I was out of. And the only thing I do have to buy yet are my steaks. All right, time to start dinner. So again, it's gonna be chicken fried rice tonight. So here's the ingredients that I'm going to use. Some chives, some onion powder. You can use real green onions or real regular onions if you choose. Olive oil, sesame oil. Instead of soy sauce, I'm using coconut aminos. Some frozen peas that I have sitting out starting to thaw. Some carrots, two eggs. And then obviously chicken and half of the rice that I baked this morning. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up my chicken into bite-sized pieces. All right, I've turned my skillet on. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of the olive oil. And then same thing with the coconut aminos. That's probably about two tablespoons of each. And then I've cut all my chicken up. So I'm just gonna cook this until it's browned and cooked completely through. All right, I've removed my chicken from the pan. It's completely done. So now I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of sesame oil into the pan. And I'm gonna start frying up my carrots and my peas. Just put a handful of matchstick carrots in there, a little more. Again, you know me, I don't measure nothing. I'm sorry. I'm just going to fry these up until the veggies are cooked through. Alright, now that my vegetables are pretty tender, Oh, I'm standing on a carrot on the floor. Oh my. You gotta have eggs in your fried rice. So I've beaten up the two eggs and I'm just going to add them in and start scrambling them. My eggs are done, so I'm just going to start combining everything at this point. Again, I'm working with cold rice, which tends to be the best option when you're making fried rice. When you try to use hot rice, it 
tends to steam and then get sticky. Or it can get mushy. And again, this is brown rice. And I'm gonna add my chicken back in. This makes quite a big, large amount of dinner here. So obviously Mike and I are going to have leftovers, but if you have a family of four, provided that you're not raising teenagers, um, this is probably definitely enough to feed a family of four. And now I'm going to add some more of those coconut aminos on top. And then you're just kind of adding to taste. I'm thinking about at least three tablespoons. yummy. All right. I need a little taste. Mmm. Oh my. That is yummy. Hi everyone, it is the next day. Oh, can you hear that? Oh my gosh, it just scared, it just scared me. It thundered and the sun is out. Oh, okay, okay, it's the next day. I don't know what was going on yesterday. I filmed everything you've watched up to this point yesterday, Tuesday, on my day off. The first segment was like 26 minutes long it would not upload. I'm, I'm filming on my phone right now because it's, uh, it's, it's the iPhone 12 and the camera quality is better quality than my actual camera that I used to use. And it would not upload to the cloud. It took, and all the rest of the clips you fought, that you saw after that initial long clip, they all uploaded right away. That clip, when I went to bed last night, still was only like hardly anything had uploaded. And it wasn't until I got up at two o'clock this morning that I saw it finally uploaded. It took, it took all day, like 16 hours from the time I started filming until the very next day to upload that. Or this video was supposed to be up yesterday. So now you had to wait till I was done working today, come home, and now I'm going to finally finish this up. So I told you, I was going to give you some ideas on stuff to swap, to cut back on some of those added sugars. So... I wrote a couple things down here. So again, I'm going to look at notes. Sorry. So first thing, when you're grocery shopping, shop the perimeter of the store. Don't shop in the middle. Go for your whole fruits and vegetables and fresh stuff on the outside of the store. That's the easiest thing to do. Anything in the center of the store is going to have added junk, whether it's sugar, preservatives, just if it has a shelf life, there's probably stuff in it that the human body doesn't really need. So, big one, avoid alcohol, especially if you're using alcohol like liquors and you're mixing them with things like um, sodas and juices and sugars. Um, again, lots of added sugar and liquor, plus when you're mixing it with other sugar-laden things, that's just a bad combination. Um... When you're buying your peanut butter, I think I'd mentioned this yesterday, peanut butter, a lot of times your commercial brands have lots of added salt. And Nutella is a big one with tons of added sugar. So try to find some nut butters that don't have the added sugar. There's plenty out there. You just have to read your ingredient list when you're buying something. Um, Jelly's another big one, lots of added sugar and jelly. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I tend to buy jellies or not so much jelly, but like fruit spreads 
that are sweetened only with fruit juices and not sugar. So they are out there, they can be found. A lot of times you'll have to find those like at a Whole Foods or a Sprouts. Um, Thrive Market also has some. But you can always opt out of jelly altogether. Like if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, instead switch it to a peanut butter and banana. So it's you're still getting the sweetness from the banana, but it's a natural sugar as opposed to an added sugar. Uh, in the morning, if you're used to eating cereal, oh, cereals are infamous for having a ton of sugar in them. So instead, make yourself a nice bowl of oatmeal using some old-fashioned rolled oats and not the quick things. Um, and just sweeten it with nut butter and berries and um, all kinds of yummy stuff like that. You can use to sweeten your oatmeal like I mentioned yesterday, like how I'd sweeten mine. Um, or make yourself an omelet and just ditch the whole cereal thing. Get up and make yourself some eggs or an omelet. It doesn't take that long um, to whip that up in the morning as opposed to cereal, Pop-Tarts, junk like that. When you're shopping and you're shopping for condiments like your marinades, um, your um, nut butters like I had mentioned, ketchup, marinara sauce, Look for brands that do not have any added sugar. They are out there, but you just have to look for them. Salad dressings. I use strictly oil and vinegar, balsamic vinegar or red wine vinegar, and then olive oil. So maybe try that. Try using just oil and vinegar and some herbs, or instead of vinegar, use lemon juice um, with your olive oil. And you can easily whip up your own homemade salad dressings that have number one, no added sugars, but number two, also healthier oil, as opposed to the junk salad dressings in the stores that are loaded with the canola and soybean oil. Candy. Uh, you know how many times I've, like one of my favorite candies was always those gummy raspberries. They're, some are red, some are black, um, and they're like little knobby things on them. Oh, that's like my favorite ooey gooey chewy candy that I used to love. I've given that all up. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy. I really do miss my chewy gummy candy. Um, but instead of candy, make yourself like a homemade trail mix using um, like fruit and nuts and just some of the semi-sweet chocolate chips. So you still get your sweetness in there with the semi-sweet chocolate chips and dried fruit. But again, it's natural sugars as opposed to, not in the chocolate chips, but in the dried fruit. Natural sugars as opposed to the added sugars. Um, instead of like fruit smoothies, like I'm not talking about my fruit smoothie, smoothie. I'm not talking about my fruit smoothie that I make cause I do not add anything to it. Um, but some of these smoothies that you get, uh, like at smoothie stands at malls and, and things like that, lots of added sugars. Instead, just opt for real whole fruit instead. Uh, what else do I have down here? Uh, yogurt. Yogurt's a big one. Careful of your yogurts. Try to find yogurts that have two grams of sugar or less in the entire container. Or just buy plain yogurt with no fruit flavor at all and add your own fresh berries and granola to it. Um, coffee. Oh my. If you're a Starbucks or a Dunkin' coffee drinker, most of the time, unless you're just ordering black coffee, um, you're getting a lot of sugar in these coffee drinks. So, you know, maybe drink your coffee black, or if you can't do that, use like stevia in it for a, a sweetener um, and try some of the alternatives to dairy cream and um, try, oh, hold on, I'm getting a text and I can't see you. Okay, I can see you <laughs> or me. Um, so just try some of maybe not a dairy cream, but um, some of the, I know Starbucks carries oat milk, almond milk. I don't know if they have the coconut milk or not, but maybe try some of those creamers instead that are unsweetened. Uh, and now you're talking like stuff like this is really limiting your sugar um, to really make some of these, those kind of swaps. I know some people are really fussy with their coffee and if that's your one vice that you have to keep in your life. I'm not coming at you on that. I'm just giving you some tips of things you can do. And then of course, like I had mentioned yesterday, get rid of the sodas, get rid of the um, 
like the energy drinks that are loaded with the sugars. And here's more text coming through. For the love of God, people, I'm trying to film. Um, your sweet teas go to water and if you don't like drinking just plain water there's plenty of like um, unsweetened seltzers out there that have natural flavors added that are like a fruit flavor so there's plenty of options out there to um, not to cut back on all those added sugars that we've all been consuming for most of our lives so I think I'm finally able to end this video here so thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, and dinner yesterday, that chicken fried rice was fabulous as usual. Again, I've made that before on my channel. Super easy to throw together. Um, it, it's a pretty quick meal if you're working a full-time job. It doesn't take very long to make that in the evening, especially if you've batch cooked your rice ahead of time. If you have not batch cooked your rice ahead of time, it is going to be a little bit more prep work. Just make sure you have your chicken out to thaw before you go to work so you're not scrambling at night to, uh, to thaw out your chicken or you get home and you're like, crap, I forgot to thaw it. Now we have to order a pizza. So I'm going to end this here. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will talk to you in a future video. Bye.